Welcome to Videocast 2 of the Musicuentos Black Box Podcast, co-sponsored by Musicuentos.com and A Dwelling Language. This episode is developed and presented by me, Justin Slocum Bailey, learner, teacher, teacher trainer, and operator of IndwellingLanguage.com. The topic of this episode is The Two Faces of SLA, Mental Representation and Skill, an article in the International Journal of English Studies, Volume 10, Number 1, published in 2010. The author is Bill Van Patten, Professor of Spanish and Second Language Studies at Michigan State University. In addition to many scholarly books and articles, Van Patten has written a slew of materials for Spanish learners, including not only textbooks, but also films and TV series. He's the recipient of numerous academic and teaching awards. The main point of this article is that second language acquisition requires, at a minimum, the development of what is called a mental representation of a language and the development of skill in the language. Van Patten argues that these are distinct components of language that are often confused with each other, with the result that the role of instruction in language learning is misunderstood. In this episode, we'll look at Van Patten's views on what mental representation is and how you get it, as well as what linguistic skill is and how you get it. We'll close with some implications for classroom teaching. Van Patten defines mental representation as, quote, the abstract, implicit, and underlying linguistic system in a speaker's mind slash brain. End quote. In simpler terms, your mental representation of a language is what lets you know what's possible in that language and what's not. For instance, to use a few of Van Patten's examples, your mental representation of English is what lets you know that the question, does John live near the university, is acceptable, while lives John near the university is off. It's what lets you know that something is missing from the sentence, John puts the cake. And it's what lets you know that you can redo or resubmit something, but you can't re-sleep or re-drink. An English speaker's brain subconsciously knows thousands and thousands of these things, for most of which no one has ever formulated a textbook rule. But Van Patten emphasizes that even for linguistic knowledge that does have an associated textbook rule, what goes on in a speaker's brain is nothing like what is written on the textbook page. It's not the case, for instance, that speakers of French somehow have verb charts in their brains that they consult in order to form French sentences. For more examples and explanations of this, I recommend Van Patten's own video lecture called What Everyone Should Know About Second Language Acquisition. So, how does a learner get the necessary mental representation of a language? Van Patten says that it's through the interaction of input, that is, language a person hears or reads, with the elements of the brain that process and integrate that input. For Van Patten, this means universal grammar, but you don't have to know what that is or even believe it exists in order to follow Van Patten's argument. The thing to know is that the human brain is really good at taking the input it receives and combining that input with what it innately knows about how language can work in order to build a mental representation of a particular language. In case you're wondering, Van Patten doesn't use the term comprehensible input in this article. He does emphasize that, in order for the brain's language faculty to go to work on it, input must be language that is actually intended to communicate meaning, not just, quote, a sample of language to illustrate how language works, end quote. He closes the section by emphasizing that, because the brain's language faculty operates on actual linguistic data in the form of input, not on information about the language, mental representation is not, quote, susceptible to external influences such as explicit information, drilling, correction, and other means by which many instructional formats attempt to induce learning, end quote. Van Patten leaves open the possibility that instruction can aid the development of mental representation by providing structured input, input that is especially likely to be processed efficiently by the brain. Mental representation is the language as it exists in a speaker's mind, but there is, of course, another aspect of language, which is its actual use. This is where, for Van Patten, the concept of skill comes in. I'll let him say what he means in his own words. Quote, I use skill as it is normally used in the literature on cognitive psychology, that is, the speed and accuracy with which people can perform certain actions or behaviors. In the case of language, skill refers to communication in all of its manifestations, interpretation, reading, listening, expression, writing, speaking, and negotiation, conversational interaction, turn-taking, end quote. Regardless of the linguistic skill, Van Patten claims that the way one improves it is by doing the activity itself. You get better at interpreting crossword puzzle clues by interpreting crossword puzzle clues. 
You get better at having a certain kind of conversation by having that kind of conversation. For this reason, Van Patten argues that teachers should think of skills instruction as, quote, providing opportunities, quote, for learners to engage in target skills. He goes so far as to say that, quote, if one defines instruction in more traditional terms, for example as explicit intervention, then instruction probably can't impact skill development. For example, how does one explicitly teach comprehension to language students? What normally occurs is that comprehension simply happens to learners as they try to ascertain what someone else is saying. It is true that teachers can teach strategies for comprehension, for example, gisting, going for key words, repeated listening slash reading, but teaching strategies for coping with language that is above one's level is not the same thing as teaching comprehension itself, end quote. The main thing Van Patten is arguing against in this section is the misconception prevalent among language teachers and learners that skill development drills, such as those that ask a learner to practice forming a particular tense or to convert direct to indirect statement, are efficient ways of making a learner better at having conversations, reading stories, or drafting emails in the target language. What does all this mean for our classrooms? Van Patten concludes the article with a section called A Confusion in the Profession, in which he laments that many teachers treat grammar as a skill that can be learned by drilling. He asks, quote, What skill is it that learners are getting when they are practicing pedagogical grammar rules? If pedagogical rules don't exist in the head, then what are learners learning to do as part of their skill? My point here is that by moving grammar into the realm of skill acquisition, as opposed to real skill acquisition, production skills and comprehension skills as part of communication, teachers and theorists conflate two constructs that really aren't supposed to be conflated. End quote. Van Patten chooses not to make recommendations for specific curricula or teaching methods, affirming that teachers armed with an understanding of the distinction between mental representation and skill are free, quote, to explore and test for themselves the various options available in the literature on instruction, end quote. I myself would encourage us to consider these three questions. 1. Which of our and our students' practices provide the communicative input that is necessary for the development of mental representation? 2. What opportunities do our students have for using communicative skills in and out of the classroom? And 3. What practices actually confuse grammar with skill or confuse communicative opportunities with drills and should therefore be reconsidered? This has been a presentation of the Musicuentos Black Box Podcast, a collection of media resources intended to form an easy-to-access, easy-to-understand bridge between second language acquisition research and teacher practice in the world language classroom. For more information about the Musicuentos Black Box Podcast collection of resources, including ways you can help keep this resource available to teachers everywhere, visit musicuentos.com slash blackbox.